Welcome to the Emporia Public Schools podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Allison Anderson Harder, Superintendent. This podcast is our way to provide students, staff, parents, and community members easy access to information on a variety of topics. Once you've listened to an episode, we encourage you to use the electronic link to provide feedback or ideas about the episode to which you just listened to, or to share ideas for future episodes. Today, I am visiting with Mr. Justin Sargent, Assistant Principal, Flint Hills Learning Center Director, and also Emporia High School Assistant Principal, Karen Sargent, who teaches English Language Arts, Social Science, and English as a Second Language, and Sherry Roth, Math and Science Teacher. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming here. Are you ready to get started? Yeah. Sure. All right. <laughs> I do want to point out real fast that there is no relation between Mrs. Sargent. Yes, I was going to bring that in. I was actually <laughs> going to work that into that okay. to the uh, conversation because um, students do ask if you're married, and there is no um, no connection. And I believe uh, Mrs. Sargent has actually put a picture of her and her husband. Yes, on her desk. Well, I actually had a student ask if I was his mom. Oh. <laughs> So, uh, and then the student said, that's funny since he's really your husband. So then I had to put the picture up. You know, just squelch all rumors, right? Correct. <laughs> Thank you for, so I was going to work that in. Sorry, so you no, jumped no, ahead. Good. No, you're good. You jumped right in there. Um, well, let's start with uh, Mr. Sargent here. Share about your professional background and then how you came to work for Emporia Public Schools. Yeah, well, I actually started in California. That's where I'm from. Um, born and raised out in Bakersfield, California. It's been my college career uh, going through Cal State Bakersfield and then Point Loma Nazarene University for my credentialing and my master's degrees in education and educational leadership. Um, started teaching out in Delano, California. Did I was an English teacher. I was at a charter school. Um, it was a very interesting kind of setup. We went 8, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. The school day it was a very long school day and um, it was designed to help the kids. It's a, it was a high gang area, so it was designed to help the kids stay out of the gangs. And it was, it was kind of a neat little thing. And then I wound up moving back to my high school that I actually graduated from, taught AP language there and, and debate. Um, went on from there to work in McFarland. So if you've ever seen the movie McFarland, USA with Kevin Costner, that's where uh, I worked. And I got to know actually a lot of the people from the movie um, as adults. And so we worked together. That was kind of fun. Um, and that's actually where I, I got my first start as, a, as an assistant principal. Um, started at an elementary school and then moved up to junior high and then had always been wanting to kind of move out of California. Um, my family's from the Midwest, Oklahoma area, um, and had always loved Kansas. I always said that Kansas is a prettier Oklahoma, right? It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a Midwest area, but it's much prettier. Um, so I haven't heard that. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of what it, it... It's your own spin? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've always liked, obviously, the eastern side is prettier than the western side, I feel like. Um, but having family back from Oklahoma, it's always kind of just flat and kind of stuff. But I just, I loved it out here. So, you know, try to get a job out here. And luckily, I got hired. And um, the funniest thing, though, by the way, is in the interview, Mrs. Sargent was part of the interview. And the very first thing anybody from the school district said to me was, you spell your name wrong. Because she spells her name S-E-R, the traditional uh, military spelling, and mine's S-A-R. And so that's what I knew. This is going to be a great place for me to work. So um, I came out here and I've been loving it ever since. And um, I love Emporia. I love Kansas. This is really my new home. So I tell people I'm from Kansas now. Oh, that's great. Yeah, make it your home. Well, I was going to start to defend southwestern Kansas where I spent a good chunk of my uh, growing up. But I mean, truly, uh, this is a better, this is a prettier, excuse me, prettier area of Kansas. (laughs) It's not that it's bad. We drove through it when we we were moving out here and it had its pretty parts. Um, but it is much flatter and I enjoy the, the hills and the Flint Hills and all that stuff. So I yes. think that's my preference. Well, there's no break for the wind. I'll tell you that. So <laughs> it, it blows, it blows really hard. <laughs> Sherry, how about you talking about your professional background? Um, I am a native to the area. I'm being born and raised in the Emporia area. Uh, and then I continued on to college at Emporia State, got my bachelor's and master's degrees, both from ESU. So go Hornets. And now I have a son attending there, so it's kind of neat to see that carry on. I got my first teaching job um, where I live in my my home district um, and spent 14 years teaching math there in the high school um, level. And then was kind of ready for a change and came to Emporia Schools as a gifted facilitator for nine years. Um, spent time at Emporia High doing that, as well as some of the surrounding um, high schools in the area. And then was ready for another change. Um, Fortunately, um, when Dr. Hart was principal at the high school, he said, Sherry, I have this really neat opportunity. I think it would fit well for you. 
at the Learning Center. And I was like, really? <laughs> and so um, at that point, I, you know, kind of did a little bit of checking um, and kind of investigating went over on a visit one day to the center to see exactly how it worked there and decided that that would be a good change for me. So I went ahead and moved into that position and have been there since. I think this is my fifth year um, doing math and science at the Learning Center and kind of similar to when I was a gifted facilitator. It's alternate education with students. And I've really found that that is my niche to be able to just do the non-traditional type stuff with students. So. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I was just thinking it was a nice, nice meld. Oh, great. All right, Karen, your turn. Okay. Well, I also attended Emporia State University, and I did my student teaching here in Emporia under Ann North and Darla Mayline. And then two days before school started in 1993, Dr. Abel hired me to be <laughs> <laughs> the social studies teacher at what was called Midtown Education Center at that time. So all my years have been with Emporia. Awesome. This is my 31st year. Wow. Congratulations. So. Okay. Now, where was Midtown located? Um, 10th and Commercial. 1001 Commercial. We were there, and then we moved to Kansas Avenue, mm -hmm. and then ESDEC took over, and we moved back to 1001 Commercial, and then we moved to the mall. Right. Okay. Yes. So, so it's coming back now. Yeah. That's yes. awesome. So, yes. All of my education experience has been under Emporia. Oh, that's cool. Well, um... So Justin was mentioning before that he just mentions it's just around the corner from KVOE, but where is the actual Flint Hills Learning Center located? Anyone can answer that. Yeah, we're in the we're in the mall. Um, <laughs> across, we're right across the way from the Drivers Ed. Um, DMV. I want to say DMV yeah. Drivers Ed. It's, yeah, we're across the way from DMV office. Uh -huh. Um, we're kind of in that corner where the bathrooms are across from the theaters and the DMV. So we're kind of right around that corner. And All Focus. Right. And Focus is there now. That's yeah, right. it's right across from Focus. Yes, right. Yeah. And then the theater's right there. So yeah, it's perfect. Great little explanation. So where it's at. Um, talk to us about how students become eligible uh, to attend the Flint Hills Learning Center. I guess I'll take that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you basically just have to um, be a student that has not had a diploma. Um, so if you're an adult learner. You come by, um, if you don't have a diploma yet, come in and we will do a transcript review of what you have done. If you've got any kind of credits, if you've got no credits, it's fine. Um, you do an enrollment process with the district. You do an enrollment process with us. You meet with me and then we get you started. So the Flint Hills Learning Center is, um, we has a nine twelve um, facility, but then also some, some adults can attend as well. And a lot of adults attend. Yeah. I mean, we've got a mix. So on site in the mornings and the evenings, we actually have, um, English as a second language classes. We have three classes that go on, um, at nine o'clock at 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Uh, and we've right now, I mean, we are, we have a packed house every day. We've got 30, 35, 40 students every hour. I mean, it's really awesome. See, it's probably the most I've seen since I've been working here. It's been really cool. That's awesome. Um, so we've got those students and then we've got adult learners who come in and they can work from home or on site. It's their choice. Typically the adult learners will come in uh, in the evening from eight to three twenty two is when we have our, our high school students who are over there. But I mean, some do come in during the day and we just put them on the other side um, where the adults are. So it's kind of, we separate the adults from the, the high school kids. But yeah, so we have kind of a whole mix of, of different kind of backgrounds and stuff there. Awesome. Can you think of the oldest student you've had there as an adult? Anybody? I want to say 65, but I feel like that's not old enough. No, yeah, I, it's it at it least older. 75. Okay. I, I yeah. thought yes. there was somebody in their 70s who mm -hmm. had. Yes. Yeah. I keep trying to think of whenever I, I go through. And graduated. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's when so I, cool. When I go through folders, I always look at the, their, their birth year. And so I'm trying to remember the, the oldest one I saw. And I think this year this it was year. in the 50s, I thought. No, so. I think there's some in the 60s this year. I so. remember doing one. Okay, awesome. yeah. But I don't think we have any higher than that. I know. I, I always look at those and I'm excited because they're older than me. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so any adult who does not have his or her diploma is able to come in and enroll and go through that process and earn their diploma and graduate. And then you have yes. a really great graduation ceremony. And this last year we had it at the Granada. And that was really, really cool. Yes. You want to talk about that? Yes. That was, I think that was our best one yet. Because the students really felt like it was for them and not just, oh, we threw you into a stage somewhere. It was for them. Um, you know, they had the, the up on stage just like they would at the at Waymon White Auditorium. So yeah. it was really nice just to be able to provide that for those students and make them feel special. And then the, some of my English as a, a second language students got to speak. And so they got to kind of show off their skills and what they'd learned and and the, just the stories that bring all of those students to our school 
are yes. amazing. So talk a little bit about that because I was at the graduation ceremony and all I could think about is that I wanted to graduate again <laughs> because it was just so, oh, it, it was amazing. So talk about how those those adult students were chosen to speak and how um, how that all came about because they did. They all had different backgrounds and had different stories. It was really impressive. It was actually in, in the evening class that I teach. There were a lot of them and you know, their conversational skills were so much better. And I was like, hey, you know, would you be interested in, in talking at our graduation ceremony? And they were like, well, yes, you know, that'd be wonderful. So they wrote down all their ideas and then edited them together. And then they practiced and practiced and practiced so that they would be able to do it well in front oh, of a group. Awesome. So oh, that's awesome. They were, they, they were oh, very excited. They were so and their impressive. speeches that they gave, I mean, they were very representative of the different types of students that we have because they each had a different story. And every student that we have has a different story, you know, yeah. as to why they're there and so why they're pursuing, you know, their diploma. So it's, it's really nice that they were willing and able to share those stories with everybody else that was yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, our, so the high school students are graduating with their diploma. So we, so it, just in previous graduation ceremonies, Nathan Fisher is also there as the high school um, head administrator. And so he's reminding them now, are you going to be there at, and, and it's William Lindsay, right? So, oh. so oh, yeah. auditorium. So I know I, I do the same forget. thing, but we, yeah, make sure in case any, but we don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> so make sure that it's William Lindsay, um, L William Lindsay, and I'm just renamed the whole I'll just person. call it White, White Auditorium. How about White Auditorium? <laughs> but he just reminds students about hey are you going to be there on sunday for the high school graduation and we have a good number that attends they attend both which is really cool and they don't have to and the great thing about having it at the granada is that if they were not having the greatest experience at the high school then they didn't they had their own separate graduation so that was okay because that was one of the things that we talked about having it at the high school is that not everybody was showing up so hopefully we are encouraging more students to show up to the graduation ceremony that's really cool um just in general you talked a little bit about the times what about the what does a student's class schedule look like well i mean they're enrolled into eight classes but we have them work on one class at a time because we feel like it that's better for them to focus on one subject and that their understanding is better and they're able to finish that, you know, in a timely fashion. Um, this year we have, mand again, we have mandatory attendance and we decided to have three different starting times to accommodate um, students' work schedules and so that we make sure that they're on time and they're completing their work. So we have three different blocks that come in and then they come in and get their work done and they're being really successful. Almost every student has already completed a class, if not two or three. Awesome. Well, that's so, great. Yeah, I want to add real fast. I think it's really important that we, the idea of us having them do one at a time. Mm -hmm. When I meet with kids, I always explain it to them. There's a huge psychological impact, I think, of doing doing school online. And I've seen a lot of kids get really frustrated and kind of, um, I don't know what the word is. I guess frustrated is the best word. But, you know, I always tell kids, when you, when you work your tail off and you're spending three, four hours a day working on, on one class, you know, doing the work, and you come in the next day and you feel like you've gotten 20% of the class done because you work so hard, it looks and feels like I'm getting, I'm making progress. I'm getting a lot done. If you put the same amount of work into four or five classes at a time, the next day you come in, you've done 5% of the class. It just feels like you're not doing anything, you know? And I've seen the, the, the discouragement on kids' faces of, oh, I'm, I'm here, I'm doing all these classes. And we've got kids, you know, that are, sometimes they're really far behind. They got to make up a lot of credits. And, you know, I think doing this process of, hey, just focus on one class, focus on this many times a day and chunking it down has been such a huge game changer for our students, their, their mental health. I think, honestly, I, most of our kids are really much more positive um, when they're there, they're not as discouraged. And so I think it's really, really been a, a really good plan that the teachers have come up with to help our students kind of succeed. So I think that's a really cool thing. Oh, yeah. And awesome. I want to add that I feel that that's part of our alternative education plan too, is to try and provide a different style of learning for students, you know, as opposed to maybe something that they were doing in a more traditional route at the high school that wasn't working for them. So focusing on one class at a time, for many students, that is very helpful, and that helps get them going in the right direction. Well, I saw a student when I was out there a couple of months ago and had been a student for me at elementary school, and I was really excited to see him because he had been struggling for a while. I knew he had been struggling, and so he was talking about graduating um, by having all his classes done in March, and then whenever he would start to say, well, if I, he would just self-correct and say, nope, I'm, I'm going to lead all my classes. I'm going to graduate, so it was really 
really encouraging because he'd have just, you know, some tough barriers kind of put in his way. So he was, it was awesome to see them him overcoming them. So there's a partnership with Tyson and Hopkins, right? Not Hopkins anymore, just Tyson. Okay, so talk to us about Tyson because that's pretty awesome too about how all that works together. So who would like to share about that? Well, we have we have a, a new English as a second language teacher in the morning, Rhonda Hajir, and she is the one that's in charge of that program out at Tyson. So she and one of our aides, Elvie Gonzalez, they go out there and they're in charge of those um, students. So they go on site, they you know take the curriculum there and they work with them through their English class and through their other classes through Odyssey Wear. And so that way, you know, we can get them right as they get either going to work or they just got finished with work so they can stop there and they're there to help those students be able to complete their high school diploma without actually having to come to the school. That's awesome. Because, well, yeah, adults, you know, they have kids and oh, lives, sure. and, you know, and so they, you well, know. Well, working different shifts. Patricia exactly. Reyes had made arrangements when I first came on and we went out there to Tyson and just how mm -hmm. they work together and how they schedule everything. And then the graduation ceremony there, too, is that is really, yes. really nice. Um, so maybe um, either high school students who have their own children or even adults with their own children. What kind of supports is there as far as there's some child care available? Uh, we have a supervised playroom so that students can bring their children and, you know, and leave them in the room. And, and we have, that's from 8 to 8, Monday through Thursday, and 8 to 322 on Friday. We have it staffed. So it really allows our high school students, you know, not feel like they have to miss out on their education because they know they have a safe place in our supervised playroom. And same thing with our adults in the evening. Most of those are the older kids, so they're just in there playing together. So awesome. having a awesome. good time. So then the adult can, the parent can just focus on the Correct. work and get as much done as uh -huh. possible. Yes. And oh, it really builds crazy. into our, our mission because, you know, we've talked when I first came on about what do we want our, our mission of our school to be. And we all talked about how our goal is to take down barriers for students to be able to succeed. And that's one of them that I think that I'm excited that we can provide, that we have the ability to say, there really is no reason why you can't come in and get work done. If you need a teacher to sit there with you and work with you, we've got teachers on site. If you've got a kid and you're worried, well, what am I gonna do? We've got people to watch your kid for you while you're there. You know, um, We really do everything we can to take those barriers down so that you can find success. And that's I, honestly, that's why I love working there because I, I think there are a lot of kids who, kids, I say kids, some are adults, but you know, that there are challenges with, with getting your diploma, especially if you're in a, later in life. and. I know that a lot of times those challenges can can kind of be in negative thoughts. Well, I can't get it done for this reason or that reason. But, you know, I love to be able to come alongside and say, no, you can get it done. We'll, we're going to help you out. We'll, we'll take those away from you. So all you have to focus on is your education and to make that progress in life that, that you want to make. And so that's one of my favorite things about the Learning Center, to be honest. Mm, that's awesome. Well, so just kind of describe what does that look like for adults or high school students coming in? What kind of technology? What kind of programs? What's available when they come in? So what, what when the first time student comes in, what are they working on? What do they have access to? Um, the program that we use is called Odyssey Wear. So everything is basically on there. So they can adults can access it from home high school students they have to work on it at the, at our center and we have you know two different uh, computer banks that they can work on so we do not let them take laptops home they come and do everything on the desktop. Well, there's nice space available yes. at the Learning Center. So there's enough space or close enough to their classmates if they have a question or need something, they're right there, but then also enough space that if they need to have some table space or just have their own space, period. Correct. That's available. Awesome. Well, um, what about any other Learning Center staff that's available to help and support students? Yeah, I mean, we've got, um, how many staff members? We've got, I think, 10 full staff members for the entire Learning Center. Yeah, obviously, we've got Sherry and Karen, who are our licensed teachers. We have, um, I'm trying, to think, trying to count my head how many we have. We got, and Rhonda is our other licensed teacher. And Rhonda is our licensed ESL She's teacher, our right? ESL teacher. My brain's trying to figure out how many aides we have. Um, we have, so Patty um, Soto Zuniga, she works with our citizenship population, our ESL population, our beginners. Um, she helps us get all the um, CASAS testing, which is our our ESL testing, you know, for us out of the way. She also is able to come over and help us on the ES on the EHS side when we need that. You know, we've got Cheryl Crow, uh, 
former teacher who's comes on and helps us as well. Elvie Gonzalez, who, um, along with Karen, I have to point out though there are two, um, we call them the Leonidas awards, our, t our employee of the year, or teacher of the year awards that we give every year. And uh, Karen's one of them. Elvie is the, is the other one who's won, um, for us. Um, I mean, so we got phenomenal people. We've got, um, Shauna who works in our, um, supervised playroom and she also helps with whatever she needs help with. We've got Elsa in the evenings. We've got Jazz and Sotelli who helps us out. Of course, we've got Irma who is the boss. Yes. We know, yes. we, we know yes. who's in charge. Don't forget, our our say, don't Irma forget Irma because she keeps it all together. She's <laughs> yes. been an awesome addition to the learning center. Awesome. So a lot of great staff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm thinking also as you're talking, so you have an awesome bulletin board. So talk about that. I love that. Okay. So you sent us to the, the conference this summer, the Model Schools Conference. And I went to one of the sessions and it was called the 180 Days of Awesome. And this lady was phenomenal. And it just really got me going. I'm like, we need, that needs to be our theme is the 180 Days of Awesome. So, you know, she has a book that goes with it. So we're doing the book study. And then, so that's our theme. We have the t-shirts. So when kids um, check out with us every day, they have to, you know, talk to us about how many assignments they've completed. And then they have to write down their one good thing for the day, their awesome of the day. So then to make kids think about, you know, what was at least one good thing that happened to me today that I can be positive about. And then that's what's up on our board and it keeps growing and growing and growing. So they always have to think of something positive. And so it's really kind of helped change the the climate and culture of our school this year. Absolutely. I think you should, you should kind of give some of the background of the the, the lady who, her story, because her story is, is really fun to listen to. So it is you should share that. Grand. This did take 20 minutes. So. <laughs> in five sentences or less. What? <laughs> okay, so in five sentences or less, she was a burnout teacher. She went home, told her parents, I'm quitting teaching. And they're like, okay, you can. And the dad was like, you can sell used cars with me. So she did that for the summer. And then... In August, she went um, shopping at Walmart and she saw all the school supplies and she's like, oh my God, I love these. I got to go back. And she said, I told my parents I was quitting, but I didn't tell my principal. So, Oh, that's she, really important. <laughs> <laughs> so she went, she went back to school and she's like, you know what? I need to look for the positive and everything instead of being so negative of everything. So she started keeping a journal of her awesome of the day. And then she ended up telling the kids, some kid did something. She's like, oh, she's like, that's going to be my awesome of the day. And they're like, what are you talking about? And then so she explained to them. So then in their English classes, they started writing their all these awesome journals. The English teachers come in. She's like, what's happening? And she's like, <laughs> what did I do? She's like, these kids are writing these wonderful things. So that just made me think we could have our kids do the same kind of well, thing. Well, and you said oh, that they had awesome. never written stuff before, right? Yeah, the, like she, like these were kids that like would not write anything. And then here these kids writing these detailed things about, about awesome. their awesomes, about yes. their positive yeah. thing. Well, and so reading the, the post-it notes that are on there, they're really yes. cool because it can be anything from... I woke up on time to I saw right. a butterfly to I finished a class. It's, right. It's all over the place, but exactly. it's all their own awesome experience. Yes. So they have to think about something and something it positive. makes them write something every day. Yes, right. yes. I need to go back and see how it's grown. That's really, yes. really cool. Uh, Mr. Sargent has been taking a picture every good. at the end every of every week. week. Oh, so good. So we'll be able oh, to I see. So, yeah. That's it's awesome. filling up faster than I <laughs> <Yeah>. thought. <laughs> That's good. Well, I mean, we've got 180 days. Yes. So. <laughs> That's yes. cool. Well, yeah, I will definitely be back out. Well, anything else that any of you would like to add that we haven't talked about? We are putting the Capturing Kids Hearts that into 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 play, I guess. Yay. Awesome. Yes, every day. One of us greets the students every Perfect. day. And I feel like that's really making a difference, you know, oh, and greeting them, yeah. using their name. I mean. Checking in with them, seeing exactly, what kind of, they, like, yes. yes. Having a conversation talk about, about, you know, you know, making sure we're giving, we're giving them those affirmations and those kinds of things. And I think that along with our 180 Days of Awesome has really helped. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, I feel like yes. that we have put a lot of really good ideas into place this year, um, you know, with our three different groups. So we have our kids set um, in time. So they're in their cohort groups. Um, and then the Capturing Kids Hearts ideas that we're putting into play along with our 180 Days of Awesome. It's just, it's a really nice positive atmosphere and i feel that our kids i say kids students you know and even adults too because it's kind of carrying over into that group also are just doing so much better this year you know not that it wasn't good in the past it's just a lot better this year well, it makes it fun to come to work and fun to come to school so that makes a big difference for everybody yes and kids um know that we actually know who they are yes 
That's really, really important. You know, names are so important. And they've really opened up more. You know what I mean? And and it's easier to change their attitudes just attitudes by being positive, you know, toward them better. That's than awesome. they're positive toward us. And so that's really helped us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it makes awesome. my job really easy when I have to come in because if they're already being positive and they see me, they're well, like, okay, yeah. I know. You know. And it's not like just always <laughs> negative. It's, it's right, fun to be able to come in and right. have that, that first interaction of positivity oh, with them, absolutely. you know, so. Yeah, yeah. and I, I mean, I think Justin can probably you know, back up that the behavior problems and things like that, that we've, you know, usually have in the past, we've had very little, if any of that this year. You know? I have and, noticed that. You know, just so, so we, you know, I have we got noticed to that. the That's point, really you know, where positive. it was kind of getting rough last year. And so we thought, you know, we need, really need to kind of look at this and see what we can do to try and, you know, divert this. And so it, I feel that those three things that we put together this year have just really made a big change and kind of yeah. flipped, flipped our class around yeah I and, and, and i will say i think i was actually out this day um i was somewhere else but we had i think i was, I was at the funeral that's where i was at when i was gone for my girl's funeral last week but we had the tech college come by and they did presentations for us and oh, i got an so. email from the lady and she said that our kids were the most respectful kids oh, wow. the you know they were they were invested they were asking questions a bunch of kids signed up for individual tours of the tech college Yay, and it was it was something like that i had never had that many kids interested in the tech college from the learning center before. And so it just, to me, that was, that, that is the, the, the staple of change that we've seen in our kids that they feel invested and not just invested in, in being done and graduating, but wanting to further their education to somewhere else. And to me, that is the coolest thing to see is that they want to go on. They're not just kind of doing the bare minimum. They're, they're really pushing themselves. And so I was really, really excited to get that email. That's another thing we're doing is we are promoting post-secondary education. Each one of the staff members, we have our own, you know, college poster where we put, you know, things about the different colleges. So there's 10 of those on the wall. And then Wednesdays are college Wednesdays. So, you know, we, we're different colleges. So could kids Kids can kind of see, you know, you don't just have to go to the tech college or Emporia State, even though those are wonderful options in our own town. But, you know, the, there's a whole world out there that's open. So well, and let's go look for We're it. not just focusing on getting a diploma for them. We're really trying to look and see if there's some other avenues, you know, for them to explore. So that's awesome. some of the kids have already gone on their tours and they've come back and they're oh, like, good. oh, I just went on my tour. So good. Yeah. So really opening excited. up. Yes. A lot of hope, a lot yes. of just possibilities that they haven't maybe thought about before. Exactly. Awesome. Well, you are all doing amazing job. You should be really, really proud of what you're accomplishing. So, yeah. 180 from previously and just and then it was good before and it's even better now. Well, thank you. Well, thank you for sharing. I'm glad you all thought about even more positive things that are happening. So thank you for sharing and thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. We will end on our Emporia Public Schools mission statement. We engage, we empower, we inspire. Thank you for listening and watch for upcoming episodes.